Joining us now is Dr. Reggie Gonzalez Peralta, who is Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Florida College of Medicine, and Dr. Ron Sokol, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. We're going to get you to talk about biliary atresia and neonatal cholestasis. Is that right? That's correct. <laughs> um, there may be a lot of people in this audience who know what it is, but for those who don't, let's do a little summary. So neonatal cholestasis is a, a group of conditions in newborns and young infants that cause direct hyperbilirubinemia. They occur in about one in 2,500 infants. And the most common cause is biliary atresia. Mm. And that is a disease still of unknown cause uh, that leads to complete blockage of the extrapatic bile duct at some point in time in the first three months of life. Um, it's a very important disease because our treatments are still inadequate and it's the leading indication for liver transplantation in children. Almost half of all children who need a liver transplant have biliary atresia. And this mostly affects infants and children, right? That, that's very correct. These uh, diseases affect, uh, are predominantly uh, diagnosed in the first three months of life, but the effects of their chronicity uh, goes away into childhood and sometimes even adulthood. And there's no specific treatment, or is there no sp specific treatment for biliary <clears throat> atresia? So currently the treatment is a surgical operation that attempts to reconstruct the extrapatic bile duct with a loop of intestine, the hepatic portal anorostomy, also called the Kasai procedure, named after the original surgeon who perfected it. Um, it works fairly well. About half of the children get reestablishment of bile flow from the surgery. But uh, by adulthood, 75% of all children, including those with a successful Kasai operation, uh, need a liver transplant. So it uh, palliates and allows the ch child to survive longer to get the opportunity for a liver transplant. So we really have a, a real need and a great opportunity to develop better therapies for this disease. So at the moment, we're pretty much with limited uh, therapies or, or supportive care is what, what's currently the, the only thing available. Monitoring is very important to, uh, in deciding growth, vitamins, levels, et cetera, in order to keep these in sick infants as healthy as possible. So early diagnosis and development of methods to treat the progressive fibrosis is what's really needed, right? That's correct. Uh, the operation, again, the Kasai operation, is much more <clears throat> successful if it's performed in the first 30 to 45 days of life <clears throat> than after 60 to 90 days of life. Um, and there's a great need to make that diagnosis as early as possible. There are currently no newborn <coughs> screening methods for biliary atresia as there are for other infant diseases. Um, however, there's been some methods using a stool color card that the parents take home at birth. Um, and if the child has pale stools, they're instructed to call into an 800 number or bring it into their doctor's office. This has been shown to be effective in Taiwan and some other countries. It's being piloted in Canada now. We're really not certain whether it would be effective in the United States, and it needs to be examined. Fascinating. What are the most recent studies focusing on? There, there's actually a three-prong approach, I think. One is, as Ron already uh, mentioned, the um, arriving at an earlier diagnosis and some of the data about the stool card uh, will be presented at uh, today's parallel pediatric parallel session uh, mm -hmm. showing that it might be a cost-effective method of, of earlier diagnosis. As has already been uh, stated, the earlier the diagnosis is made, the better this Kasai procedure uh, works and the better, presumably, the, the long-term outcome. Although, as already stated, it's 75% of infants with biliary atresia will eventually need a liver transplant. So that's one arm. Mm -hmm. The other arm is trying to uh, perhaps uh, differentiate uh, children with biliary atresia, uh, figure out, determine biomarkers that might predict who will do better and compared to those that may not do as, as, as well. And the third, quite frankly, is to figure out better ways of treating not only the fibrosis that results from, from the underlying disease, but the actual cause of the disease and perhaps not even have the disease in the first place. Wow. Lots of information, lots of things for people to take away from in this session. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.